Now, as we've covered in our ongoing series, Is Portland Over? There is a fight to keep the charm of the Rose City. At the same time, there are alarming sights across the area, like homeless camps with piles of garbage, needles, stolen cars, and human despair. Well, tonight our Dan Tilkin looks at one curious homeless camp in full view on the shores of the Columbia River. He joins us right now, Dan. Yeah, so right under the path of jets taking off from PDX, a three men and a woman have staked their claim to this waterfront piece of property and making this a legal cabin. Their small compound has gotten the attention of the city. And you'll see it's another case study of why the city's homeless crisis is so hard to fix. People driving south on the I-205 bridge have looked across the Columbia River towards PDX and for months watched as the cabin took shape, overlooking the water along Marine Drive. We've been wondering why you guys haven't come out and stopped and take a look. Among those living here is Clyde Wilcutt and his dog, <laughs> Mr. Magoo. You see, this was a cabin that we built here. It, uh, it's got a loft in there. So it didn't have a roof? Yeah, it had the roof and stuff. We had to take it off because they told us we have to move it. Take it apart, so that's what we're doing. He lives here with Corey Gregg. This spot has been the longest we were, we were here six months. And built it with Don Rainey. Do you understand why people would be concerned? I mean, this is kind of the gateway to the city on, the, on 205. No, not really. We tried to get housing, we tried to get help, and they said they were going to give us help, and they never came back. So. Um, I just got started my social security, so it isn't like we have a lot of money coming in. And uh, got to survive. We just want to be like everybody else. Don is 56 years old, has lived in Portland 30 years, the last eight on the streets after he says he became disabled. Clyde grew up in Oregon. I went to high school out in Colton. He served in the Army, has had numerous run ins with the law and at 61, suffers from a bad hip. I've been on the streets for five, six years now, and I'm really tired of it. Corey came here from Idaho after getting into trouble with drugs. Couldn't you guys, like, even if you're on disability or Social Security, like, get three guys in one room and rent a, an apartment? They don't allow that. Like, if you try to rent an apartment with more than one person, they don't like that. Yeah, you, like, you if can. you get an apartment too, like, say you get an apartment, you try to bring your friend over to shower? No, they don't like that. They, 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 they'll they'll kick you out you from for that. that. You get, you you get, get evicted. Out. You get kicked out. Is the answer cheaper housing? Is the answer more jobs? Is the answer less drug addiction or more drug treatment? What's the answer? It doesn't have anything to do with drugs or drug treatment here. Um, it has to do with housing. That's basically it. Too expensive? Yeah. I mean, everything's expensive nowadays. Look at the price of gas. You got to pay five bucks a gallon. I mean, that's crazy. The men originally built the cabin to store their belongings and lived in motorhomes until recently when they say the city made them move the RVs. Where's all the sewage go? Um, that's why I had motorhomes here and stuff, everything like that. And like, I walked to the 7 Eleven or go to Home Depot. When we talked to the men Wednesday, they said the Portland Bureau of Transportation came and issued an order everything has to go. How much time did they give you? Uh, we're supposed to have it done by now and stuff. We're supposed to have it done Monday. That hasn't happened yet, and the men have to find somewhere else to live and how to pay for it. We keep doing all these stories about how empl employers can't find enough employees. There's a lot of people who say, don't just get a job. What's your response to that? I applied. I've applied and applied and applied to jobs. And uh, not being able to shower, not being able to, you know, take care of yourself, hair. Haircuts, you know, trying to keep clean, keep clean clothes, not being able to do laundry. You can't find a job. You walk into a place, they look at you and go. <laughs> Clyde is in the process of building a tiny home. His plan, take it, himself and his dog to Arizona to live with family. Hopefully, if he can make it that far. That's what I'm doing. It's really frustrating, but I'm doing it. And there's a big problem with Clyde's plan. According to court records in the DMV, his driver's license was revoked several times. He's not even supposed to be driving. He's not supposed to be behind the wheel.
back to that deadline of today to get the cabin torn down. The Bureau of Transportation told me that's simply not true. Hebot says it's been speaking with the men for more than three months and advised them that cabin and RVs would need to go someday, but no deadline was set as part of their humanitarian policy. Listen. Because a lot of people contact us and say if the city wasn't so permissive with allowing things like this, we wouldn't be in the situation we are. Even before the pandemic, uh, we were directed by council and by the city commissioner, the transportation commissioner at the time, to really uh, have a humanitarian approach and avoid displacing people who are already in such dire circumstances that they're living in a vehicle. All right, so Dan, you did talk to those men for quite some time and you asked them several times about did they get why people who live in the city see why their cabin might be unsightly and a problem and what did they have to say when you asked really them? trying to pin them yeah. down on that. They think they're actually doing a service that they would run other people who tried to camp there off who they said were, you know, would leave more garbage and that type of thing. They thought they were actually keeping that area clean. They also say, where else are we supposed to go? And then you get this disconnect between what PBOT says and what they're saying, and you just can see why it's so hard to figure out these individual situations times how many thousand people. Did I hear right? They said there was someone that came out to outreach, then they never heard from that person again? That's what they say, tried to pin them pin down. down they it's, that's what's so hard about all of this. It is, and it's not necessarily a homeless issue. In their case, it's affordable housing. In other cases, it is drug addiction. Yep. In other cases, it's mental health. And we all say it's homeless. It's like four different things. Yeah. Yes, every single person out there has a different story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dan, thank you.